to be honest, when, when we started these conversations uh, last year uh, and we were in the middle of a pandemic, uh, it certainly helped me realize that I was not alone living this, this crisis. Uh, being able to, to gather with, with a church there that is diverse um, was really um, eye-opening for, for me, I would say. What I want to offer young people here in this space is what my grandmother instilled in me to believe. You are made in the image of God. And that's what I want to share with all of you, that no matter how hard things are, no matter that even if I, the rest of the community is judging us, doesn't accept us for who we are, God is always there for us. When I look to creation, I see dazzling diversity. And I believe that creation tells us something about Creator. God must delight in diversity. May our church reflect God's delight. But this question of can you even be Native American and Catholic? Um, and it seems like a reasonable question. Yes, how's that? Well, let's just answer it right away. <laughs> yes, you can. I, I don't want to uh, wait until the all the end and we have to find out what my answer is going to be. But maybe to talk about why I believe that and why the church believes that as well. Um, and I, th I think we go back to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, last words our Lord shares with the, uh, the apostles. And he says, go to make disciples, baptize in the name of the Trinity. Uh, teach all I have commanded you and remember I'm with you until the end of the ages. And it, in that, we hear our Lord not saying, go out and preach and teach and um, impose a culture on a culture or suppress a culture or change a culture, all these different things. He simply says to go and, and make disciples, baptize, teach, and remind uh, the world that he's, he's always going to be, uh, to be, to be with us. I, I just want to go to Dallas now, uh, to just, um, to, you know, that, that beautiful example you gave Dallas of, of um, you know, in, in Hawaiian culture, looking to the source, to always looking to your, those who have gone before you, kind of to stand on the shoulders of the giants who have gone before us, right? Uh, and that you see that as, you know, in your own Catholic faith through the saints. Um, are there any other examples of particularly uh, the, your Hawaiian kind of identity and culture that you see so beautifully expressed and inculturated in your Catholic faith and in your community? When, when the Catholic missionaries first arrived, they, um, you know, learned the culture as best as they could. And um, from my understanding, it was only a week after they got here that they established a chapel and put a, you know, put a, a tabernacle there. And uh, the history says that what they did is around the tabernacle, they put these two great kahili. And kahili are these royal standards, right? They were made out of bird feathers and they would follow around the elite, the chief. And that was part of our culture, part of our tradition. And wherever a royal would go, that standard would follow. It's a very beautiful thing. Well, what did the Catholic Church do? They came in and they put kahili around the tabernacle. So when Hawaiian, when kanaka, when kanaka would come in, that's what Hawaiians call, that's what the Hawaiian word for Hawaiian is. We, we don't call ourselves Hawaiian, we are kanaka, right? When the kanaka would see the tabernacle, they would know that whatever's in that, whatever is, whatever's in that tabernacle must be important. And indeed it is, because what does that kahili surround? It surrounds not only a king, it surrounds the king of kings, right? I am black, I'm Catholic, and I'm here. I'll say it again. I'm black, and I'm Catholic, and I'm here. And so brothers and sisters, when we say admonishing the sin and admonishing the sinner, when it comes to the black Catholic experience, the experience of African Americans, the experience of, of people of color in our church, we are calling out those ways in a prophetic manner because we know the church, we know the body of Christ, we know the administrative body of Christ is better than mediocrity, is better than hypocrisy, is better than inauthenticity. And there is a need for us to consistently proclaim that the truth will set you free. Yes. I am black, I am Catholic, I am here. That should be our new anthem. Yes! Um, but I think that relates back to having a heart to listen. Uh, I sometimes take issue when people say you need to be a voice for the voiceless because more often than not, people are using their voice. They are saying when they are hurting. 
but are we listening? Are we genuinely listening to those voices? This journey has given me a positive look on discomfort. It's hard to admit when you're wrong, to take a step back and switch your viewpoint from denial to acceptance. But with acceptance of this feeling of discomfort comes growth. At first, I wanted to run from the hard conversations and hide from the fact that change needed to happen. But once I sat with that feeling of discomfort, I was able to recognize the beauty that it can bring. Growing up in a Latin American country, I had very little interaction, let alone friendships, with people from different cultural backgrounds. When I came to the U.S. as a high school student, part of my culture shock was to see the incredible cultural diversity that exists here. Unfortunately, the first things that I heard about other people was nothing but stereotypes about their cultures. Very soon though, as my interactions continued to grow, I realized that I had to make a decision. I was either going to encounter people through stereotypes or I was going to encounter them as each of us are. Letting go of preconceived notions about who other people are allowed me to open up to genuine connection and intercultural friendships at work, in school, and in ministry. And this process of journeying together has deepened my understanding of the very different realities and very different stories of each of our cultural families. It has really opened my eyes to the world around me to make me realize that the world doesn't revolve around me or my immediate circle. Um, but there's so much more to learn out there from others and I think it's worth it for everyone to really push themselves and try to go out of their comfort zone and to engage with people who are different from you because you definitely will learn something from them. We're, we're diverse and uh, we don't have to be identical or exactly the same but we can respect each other, we can love each other, we can learn from each other most importantly, we can see the face of Christ in each other.